This is a lesson on patterns in multiplication and division. So to start off, um, what I need you to do is complete this chart below um, by using patterns. So uh, part of it is finished for you. So what you need to do is um, follow the pattern and continue it so that you can finish the entire chart. Okay, so go out these sides first and then you'll get to uh, this part later on to get your uh, pattern. So pause the video and complete the pattern and then uh, we'll check our answers after. So if you're having trouble, um, just notice that you're skip counting. So I've got some done here. Skip counting by ones here, skip counting by twos across here, skip counting by threes across, skip counting by fours across. So if you haven't finished, please pause the video and then um, start again once you're done. Okay, so this is all of the answers that you should have got. So um, pause the video now and just double check to make sure you've got each one of the numbers right, especially the ones in this area. Um, those ones were the, probably the most difficult for you. Okay, so um, now that you've done that and you've, I hope, I hope you've paid attention to the patterns that formed um, when you were doing that. And what you actually made, if you didn't notice, was a multiplication chart. So um, without using a multiplication chart, you also need to uh, figure out how to add as well, or not add, multiply and divide as well. So here are some strategies for multiplying other than using a multiplication chart or a calculator. So one strategy is to skip count up from a known fact. So you just skip counted in your um, chart, um, but here's an example. So if I want to find six times eight, I can start with a known fact like 6 times 6, which I know is 36. And then I can skip count up by 6 to add 2 more because notice how 6 is 2 less than 8. So that means I have 2 less groups of 6 to get um, to my answer, right? Because this is saying that I have, um, well, this is saying that I have 6 groups of 8. Or I could say I have eight groups of six. So in this case, I'm saying I have six group of, groups of six, and I, two, I need two more groups of six to add to this answer. So I can skip count up by six to add two more. So six groups, or to add two more groups of six onto 36. So that would look like this, 36 plus six, there's one skip counting, plus 36 is another skip counting. Okay, so this part you would do in your head to figure it out, but 36 plus 6 is 42, plus another 6 is 48. So there's 48, so that means that 6 times 8 equals 48. Okay, and then over here we've got skip count down from a known fact. That's another strategy that you can use. So this one's skip counting up from something that you know. This is skip counting down from something that you know. So if I want to find 6 times 7, and I know 7 times 7, right? I could use 6 times 6 in this case, but we're going to show 7 times 7 and then subtracting from that. So I've got 7 times 7, and I know that's 49. And then I can skip count down by 7 to subtract one group of 7 from 49, right? Because I put an extra group of 7 in here, and I need to take that extra group of 7 out. And so that means that um, if I take 7 away from 49, so 70 or 49 minus 1 group of 7, take it out of there, that'll equal 42. So uh, 6 times 7 equals 42. Okay, so those are two strategies, skip counting up and skip counting down. Then down below we've got strategies for dividing. Now the only strategy that's really useful in this case is um, finding related multiplication facts to find the quotient. And the quotient is the answer when you're dividing. So if I want to find the related multiplication facts, um, I need to be pretty good at multipl multiplying then. Um, but so if I want to find 72 divided by 8, then this is what I think in my head. 8 times which number is 72? Because whatever the number times 72, or whatever the number times 8, equals 72 is my answer. So I know that 8 times 9 is 72. So 
that means that 72 divided by 8 equals 9. So they are reversible, just like us adding and subtracting are reversible. Okay, so that's what, that's what this one. Um, this one you may have needed to use a multiplication chart just to figure out uh, that that's 72. So in that case, whew, you could go. There we go. Um, we, have, we know 72 and we know 8, so we can go to our chart and we find 8 and then we go down till we find 72 and then we go across to find the number and that's 9. So that's how I find that that um, is my quotient. Right there, see, nine. Okay, and then um, I put some multiplication and division terms on here just because we're going to be talking about them and um, you're going to need to know, know them. So when you are multiplying, then the numbers that you are multiplying with are factors. Both of them are factors. So four is a factor in this case and five is a factor in this case. And then the answer is the product. Then on this side, we've got um, division terms. So there's three in this case. So you have to pay a little bit more attention. So the front number, the very first number in the division sentence is a divided. Okay, um, to remember, you could think that uh, this word ends in, in end, in the word end, and so think that it goes on the end. Um, in the middle one, the middle number is a divisor. So it divides this number. So the divisors always need to be bigger, I mean smaller, divisors always need to be smaller than the divide end. And then the answer is a quotient. So the answer is quotient. So just remember the one with the other letter, the Q would be the um, answer. So product and quotient is what we're finding in multiplying and dividing. Now um, on the other page, if you flip, we've got multiplying and dividing by zero. So uh, I know you've learned this before, but let's review multiplying by zero. So when multiplying by zero, the answer, your answer is always going to be zero. Always. doesn't matter if the zero is first or second. It's going to be zero. So for example, eight times eight is eight groups of nothing. So if you have eight plates with zero sandwiches on each plate, then there are no sandwiches. So it's easy to think about. Um, eight times zero equals zero. Okay, now if we do it the other way, zero times eight is no groups of eight. So if you have zero plates, each with sandwiches on them, then you have zero sandwiches because I don't have any plates, right? And I said oh, the sandwiches are only on the plates that I don't have. So that means that zero times eight equals zero. So that's pretty easy to think about, right? You already knew this one. But now let's go down to dividing. It matters for the order when you're dividing. The zero can only be in a certain spot or it won't work. So let's look at that. This is the way that it works when dividing zero by a number. So that means that zero is the divide end, not the divisor. Then the answer will always be zero. So just like multiplying, dividing by zero or dividing zero by something is zero. So here's our example. Zero divided by five is nothing divided into equal groups. So that makes sense. If I have no strawberries and I divide them into equal groups of five, I still have no strawberries. Okay, so think of a related, or this is another way to uh, think about that. Think of a related multiplication fact, five times which number is zero. So using your strategy that I showed you for dividing. Um, so you're thinking, okay, five times what number will equal zero? Well, um, five times zero will equal zero. So that means that zero divided by five equals zero. See, these two end numbers can switch. Now, this is where it, we come into a problem. So when you have to divide a number by zero, so zero becomes the divisor and it does not work. It's not possible in math. So here's an example, five divided by zero. So think about this as five sandwiches sorted into no groups at all. So think of a related multiplication fact using our strategy for dividing. So zero times which number is five? Hmm, zero times which number equals five? Well, that's not possible because we know zero times any number at all equals zero. So 
you cannot divide a number by 5. And if this question was asked, you would write error. You would just write error because it's impossible. Right? Some of you might think, well, maybe it's just uh, 1 or 0, but it doesn't work because you can't do it. Okay? So, um, down below, we've got three examples. So, try these and then, um, or I guess, pause the video, try these, and then we'll go through it after. Okay, so... Um, we've got A here, we've got 4 times 7, whoops, um, so my strategy could be, oops, 4 times 4, because I know this one, 4 times 4, that equals 16, and that means I only have 4 groups of 4, but I need 7 groups, so I need 3 more groups of 4, so I would go 16 plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, okay, so 16, 17, 18, 19 would equal 20, 21, oh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That didn't work. Hang on. Oh, that's why. Because I did groups of three. Uh, Miss Bash, fourth, pay attention. We need three groups of four. See how I did that? Um, it didn't. It didn't make sense to me, and I paid attention. I thought, oh, that's not logical. So let's do groups of four and do it properly. So um, we've got, here we go, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So here we go. I used my strategy. This means that four times seven equals 28. Okay, so I used my strategy from above. Now let's look at um, 32 divided by 4. So this I'm thinking, 4 times what equals 32? Now if I'm not sure, I can flip to my chart that I made. Whoops, um, that's over here. So I'll go to 4. So here's the column. And I'm, oh, we'll go this way. 4 over, 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 over. There's 32. So that means that 8 is my answer. And over here, so 8. So that means that 32 divided by 4 equals 8. Okay, and then we've got this one. So um, I hope you paid attention above because we know that if it, the 0 is a dividend, so the first number, it works. So this equals 0. If you wrote error, then you need to pay attention to where the 0 is, because if 0 is the second number, the divisor, then it doesn't work. But as the first number, it works. Okay, so that is how you answer those. Um, here's your assignment, page 74 to 75, numbers 1 to 5 and 7 to 9.